Hi everyone and welcome back. If it's your first time here, I'm Kaska and in today's video I'm going to be making a petticoat to go over my bustle. That's right, we're finally going back to the 1880s and finishing the undergarments for my 1886 outfit. I'm going to be using these examples from the Met for inspiration because I really like how the ruffles give a lot of fullness to the back. I think they look really pretty. I found this super cute unicorn duvet cover in a charity shop. It was only a fiver. <laughs> Just in case there isn't enough fabric in this, I think there should be, it's pretty big. I do have some backup duvet covers as well, but I just, when I saw this, saw how cute it was, I just had to make something out of it, I couldn't just leave it there. I'm not going to make a proper pattern for this, just because it should be reasonably simple. I'm thinking one panel for the front, two for the sides, and another two for the back. Right, let's get started. Okay, so I have got my bustle on my mannequin, which is set to my height. It's also got my corset on it, so the waist should be good. <laughs> what I need to do now, though, is I need to take measurements from the front of the waist to the, well, I probably, I want it to be shorter than the skirt by like an inch or two. So I'm thinking, about three inches or something off the floor. So yeah, uh, measurement from the front at the waist to about three inches from the floor and then from the back going over the bustle and to the floor because I know that that measurement is going to be longer than it is for the front. Then for the sides, I basically want to do like a taper. Um, so the pattern pieces will end up kind of going like straight for a bit at the front and then dipping down like that towards the back. So I'm going to take those measurements and then I'll sort out my fabric. Just looking at these measurements now, the front measurement is 38 and the back measurement is 43 so there is quite a difference. Okay, so what I've done is I have cut each side of the duvet cover in half. So I've got a front and a back. I've cut off all the seams and stuff as well because they're not usable anyway. So for the front part, that's unicorns all the way down. And for the back, it's like an ombre. Um, going from pink to blue. You can see that better on the pillowcases. So yeah, it goes from a really, really light pink through to like purple and then blue. So the plan is, I think I should have enough of this front panel to make the entire petticoat. I might have to do a bit of piecing. We shall see. If everything goes according to plan, I'll be making the main petticoat out of this and then I will be cutting this into strips and they are going to be my ruffles going on the back of it and I'm going to keep the ombre effect and have it going from really pale pink down to blue and I think that'll look really pretty. If it's looking like I'm a bit short, I might be able to utilise some, some of the pillowcases. What I'm thinking is I do have a reasonable amount on these pillowcases. So I might be able to make a corset cover, because I've got two. It'll have to be quite a small corset cover, I won't be able to do lots of embellishments and stuff, but it will do, especially since my corset's black. And it'll be nice to have a matching corset cover like to go with the petticoat as well. I'm not 100% sure if this is enough, but if it is, that could be really fun. Right, so what I need to do now is lay out 
this fabric and start working out if I have definitely got enough to make it out of that. Right, so I've got all my pieces cut out and I have overlocked my raw edges. What I ended up doing was I've got a front panel which is smaller at the waist and then gets wider towards the bottom. I've got two side pieces which go in a little bit towards the top and then tapers out a little bit. And then I've got my two back pieces. What I ended up doing to make everything fit was I cut one piece normal, it's quite wide, and then I cut the other piece on the side so the unicorns are facing the wrong direction but it doesn't matter because these panels are going to get covered up anyway. I'm running a little bit behind because I started this on Tuesday and it is now Saturday because I had the bright idea of doing a little bit of exercise. But spring, try and get myself fit. No, no, my body did not like that. So I've basically been laid out for the past few days while my body's just like, screw you, <laughs> I hate you, I hate you now because so all I need to do now is stitch those pieces together and do the ruffles on the back. What I'm going to do is stitch the two back panels together, leaving a gap at the top open so that I can actually get it on and off. And then attach my ruffles to that while it's not a nice flat piece. And then attach the sides and the front pieces. I hope that makes sense. I hemmed the bottom of each ruffle, then added two rows of gathering stitches. Each strip was ruffled up and attached to the skirt back. Then I attached all the panels and hemmed the bottom. Okay, so this is where we are at. It's nearly there. I've got all the ruffles on. I've got the simple rolled hem. What we do have now, though, is a lot of excess fabric. What the plan is, is I'm going to split my waistband into three sections. So I'll have a section 
across the front going up to the side and then at the back I'll have two sections, one here, one here. Then all this nonsense here is going to get gathered up. So I'll have my, I've got some twill tape that I bought by accident. It's some white stuff that's really thin. I'm going to use that as a drawstring. And what I'll do is, I'm not going to have any in the front part of the waistband, but on the two back sections, I'm going to anchor it in place, stitching it to where the seam is between the two parts of the waistband and then I'll be able to just gather all this up with that drawstring and my theory is that it will create enough scrunched up stuff in this area that I won't have to have a bustle pad to pad out the little hollow from here that's the theory anyway, we shall see if it will work. I attached my waistband by stitching it to the front of the skirt. I then folded it over to the back and stitched in the ditch to secure it in place. Right, so the petticoat is finished and I do have enough fabric left to make a corset cover. So what I'm going to do is I am going to use my block pattern. I figure even with a corset on, this part of me doesn't really change very much. The only places that are going to change are my waist because I do get a bit of a reduction in corsets and my apex point which in a corset is going to be higher. This doesn't really matter though with a corset cover because they tend not to be very fitted so what I am going to do is I am going to, for the front, but the back I'm going to keep pretty much the same as that. I need to get rid of this dart. I put it in there because that was on the pattern that I used as a base for this. But I always end up taking it out, so I'm going to have to make a new version of this without this dart. So this will get swung down to there. And then rather than having a dart, it will just be gathered. And with the front I'm going to swing this dart down and that's all going to be gathered up as well. I am also going to change the neckline because this goes right up high so I'm just going to bring it out a little bit and I'm going to curve it in like that and just bring it down a bit more. I will have to remember to take off whatever I've taken off from here on here as well so that the back pieces match. I'm not sure how much lace I'm going to do. I've got a pack of bits of lace and it's all like maybe like two meters, three meters. There'll be something that goes with this. I'll have to have a play. I might just do a little bit around the neckline and see how that looks. Buttons wise, I have got so many buttons. I've got to show you this. Christmas, my other half found this in a second hand shop and it's just wonderful. <laughs> it was 15 quid and there's just every type of closure you could imagine. Like belt loops and the best thing is all the buttons I've got, there's maybe three like pushing it for that match these ones are all matching <laughs> so yeah I will definitely get some use out of these to do some buttons
I attached a button placket to the front parts of the bodice. I then searched all my edges, because I forgot before, and then attached the fronts to the back. I did add some lace but I didn't like it so I swapped it out. It was a little bit scratchy and just didn't look right. Finally I attached my buttons and a drawstring to the bottom. I seriously can't get over just how adorable this looks. It's just so cute and pretty. I think the colours work really, really well on the ruffles on the back. And the unicorns are just the icing on the cake. <laughs> Fit-wise, I think the corset cover is really nice. It didn't need to be that fitted. And using my block... I knew that like it was going to fit around the arms and stuff like that, so that's good. The only thing is, I do wish I'd made it a little bit longer, because you can see a little bit of my corset poking out. For the petticoat, I think it might be a little bit too big. It's also a little bit bulky and a bit hard to actually get on, so... As pretty as it looks, it doesn't... I, I'm so happy with how it looks. I'm thinking I might just unpick that bit of the waistband at the back and then pleat it all up. I think that'll look nicer and it won't be quite as bulky and I'll be able to get it a bit smaller as well. Other than that though, I love it. I really do love it. It's a shame it's an undergarment because it looks so pretty. <laughs> Just to reiterate what I said on my community tab, sorry this video is a little bit late. The old fibro demon came to visit. There will be some extra videos going out this month and maybe next month as well. Just because I've got some things that are like need to be out in March and there's only so much time. So I'm thinking there's probably going to be another like three or four videos going out this month. Should be fun, some little collaborations and stuff. And hopefully by April I should be working on the bodice and the skirts and stuff for this 1880s project. 
If you enjoyed this video and fancy giving it a little like, it'd be very much appreciated. I'm always open to your suggestions and constructive criticism, so anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. And if you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things, why not subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified next time I upload a video. I do my very best to upload a new video every two weeks, apart from this month, where there'll be a little bit more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!